right. I'd like to call to order the Colchester Planning Commission. It is 7:10. So the first item tonight we're going to have is agenda considerations, deletions of agenda items, or revisions of our agenda order. And this will be a new item that we're going to. Here, this will be a new item we're going to add, uh, just in case we want to make uh, last-minute decisions on our agenda. So anything you'd like to add for that, Kathy? No. Okay, so we're going to go to, these are comments and questions from the public not related to the agenda. Everybody's here for probably one purpose. Very good, thank you. All right, here we go. So we have development regulations, public outreach related to development standards in the area of East Lake Shore Drive. I'm going to leave go with Kathy on this. Okay, go ahead. All right. That's what we want to do. So, um, this has been a work in progress for quite some time, at varying stages. The last two town plans, I believe, had direction in it to look at the zoning along both West Lake Shore and East Lake Shore Drive. West Lake Shore was rezoned in 2016, if I remember right. And uh, at the time, it was just a little too much to get to East Lake Shore. The 2019 town plan reaffirmed that as a goal. And when the Planning Commission met um, after sort of the COVID hiatus throughout last summer, uh, identified the rezoning of East Lake Shore as the number one priority. So here we are um, kicking off some of the public outreach for that. What we have tonight to get us started is more of an interactive session. Um, we'll start with some of what we call a visual preference survey. If you look around the room, you're gonna see a bunch of pictures up on the wall. In the back corner here, there is a table with a bunch of sticky pads and some pencils. I'm hoping that everybody will take some, walk around to the various pictures. I wanna start by saying that none of these are in Colchester. Most of them are in Vermont. So these are not completely out of out of scale with Vermont, but there's a lot of thoughts. I bet you already have on them and probably will have on them. So if you could just sort of spread yourselves out once I'm, I'm done chatting, grab those. What I'm hoping everyone will do is take a look at them. Write anything on those sticky notes that you like. Maybe label it as an L. Anything you dislike. Try to be as specific as possible. You could talk about windows, doors, closest to the road, height, um, character, anything that pops out to you in terms of what is appealing to you and try to put that in context of East Lake Shore Drive. I think, because I think that's important. Maybe there's something you like in Burlington, but you wouldn't necessarily like on this road. So that's gonna be exercise one. I, I, I'm just, maybe I'm catching up. So when you say, is all of East Lake Shore Drive residential now? And you're talking about changing it from residential to something else? We don't know. Okay. It's, it's considering, so when we're kicking this off, we're trying to understand what, what folks are envisioning. So this is a visioning exercise. It's possible, very likely to be a rezoning. Um, as a bit of a background, East Lake Shore right now is R2. That is the same zoning and you can see it on this map here. Feel free to pop in and look at that as you're bouncing around. Um, that is the same zoning that extends out quite a bit. Goes up Williams Road, includes a lot of um, some of the more suburban areas. If you're not sure what R2 means, this board over here is another place I invite you to add some comments. What you'll see on there is Lakeshore 1 and Lakeshore 2. Lakeshore 1 is West Lakeshore Lakeside. That's the area that was rezoned in 2016. It is different than Lakeshore 2. That's the West Lakeshore Drive, non-Lakeside. So you can see what sort of was envisioned and what has been in place now for six or seven years for that area. I've also included the current zoning up there for R2. That is the current zoning for most of East Lakeshore. I say most, the first few properties, as you'll see on this map, um, as you turn onto East Lake Shore, are, are, are actually part of the L1 and L2 that were part of the rezoning for West Lake Shore. Um, I, don't, I don't know the history of why those few properties were considered. What's that again? 
So there's a few properties on East Lake Shore that were included in the L1, L2 rezoning. I don't, I think it's just the way it laid out. We wanted consistency. Okay, yeah, so it's not in the entirety of East Lake Shore, it's most of it, but you'll see here. Um, as for the depths of the properties, I think that's something else, especially the non-lake side of East Lake Shore. Um, something else we'll be talking about and trying to figure out. There are some properties that have frontage right on East Lake Shore. There are some that, that have that frontage but extend back quite a bit. I think the parcel lines are on this map so you can see those. I don't know, it'll be part of what we're talking about, um, where that rezoning, if it happens, would take place. Um, there's a general agreement that the R2 zoning is not appropriate for at least parts of East Lakeshore. We have 40 foot heights that are permitted in R2. Um, there's been some, some talk about that. There's lot sizes, other dimensional standards. I won't get into too much because what we're here tonight is not to talk to you, but to hear from you. Um, part of that will be hearing from you in terms of your notes here. I invite you to also leave some notes up here. You'll see some blanks on sort of those dimensional standards. I hope everybody can get to that one especially. Um, any other notes for things that you think about that, that stand out to you um, along East Lakeshore would be really helpful for the, pl for the Planning Commission to um, hear back. We, um, when we're done with this exercise, we'll sort of take a look through and, and if anyone wants to share their thoughts or talk about anything, uh, there's definitely going to be some time to, to hear that and talk through that again. The goal of tonight is, is really a listening session. It's to hear from everyone. Um, and we don't have anything prepared to give to you. Uh, we can talk when we're done with this um, about timing and what the next steps will be. Um, but our goal tonight is, is to hear from folks on, on what, uh, what they wanna see and what they like. Um, and some of that will come through sort of assessing some of these visualizations. Um, You'll see that some of these are, are non-residential properties. Um, feel free to add any thoughts you have on the very idea of any sort of non-residential property or specifics um, as you bounce around. Are, are you distinguishing between lakeside and non-lakeside in this visualization? In the visualization, sure, if you'd like to do that on your notes, but you don't have to. Um, you could, you certainly feel free to say, love this for lakeside, hate it anything like that. Be as specific or as broad as you'd like with your notes. Put as many as you like. If you'd like to write a bunch about one that you absolutely like and never get to the rest, that's okay. Um, it's really, really up to you. Um, again, I do hope that everyone does at least take a look at this board because there's some more specifics that you can, you can provide and share. Um, there's some coffee, some water, some <laughs> cookies in the back. Um, I really hope this is sort of a fun and an engaging exercise because I think it's a good way for us to hear from people without having to force you to stand at a microphone and uh, and elaborate on on various things and sometimes things are more challenging to articulate until you can see them um, and hopefully that'll be what this exercise is for I'm gonna poke the commissioners to do the exercise as well um, and share some thoughts or at least maybe bounce around and talk to people um, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight, too. This is very important to us. Uh, we can discuss amongst ourselves all day, but people that live there, they should have the most opi biggest opinion. So that's, this is the best turnout we could ask for. Um, I hope you all feel comfortable taking a walk around like Kathy has suggested. This is something new to try for us. Uh, hopefully it just gets more ideas out there. Could I ask a question before we start? Absolutely. In terms of, uh, there's a town rec center Kathy, do, you, do you know anything about that? I'm sorry, I'm doing Town Rec Center. So that would be at the Hazlet property? Yeah. Yeah, I'm even better. <laughs> that would be here. Um, okay. Is there um, any plans on either side of East Lake Shore Drive that go with that property, like in terms of the size of the center and are they going to do anything on the lake side with those plants? Not by all. Okay. 
So I do, I'm glad you asked that question. I do want to, and this isn't a direct response to your question, but I, I do want to remind folks that the Planning Commission has, they have a, a, a big job. Um, the regulations certainly cover a bunch, but there's also a bunch that they don't cover. I know that there are folks who may have lingering sewer questions. There may be lingering questions about traffic and sidewalks. Please understand that nowhere in the regulations does um, do we address those things, speed limits, et cetera. And while you may have very valid and important thoughts on those, uh, we're hoping what you can share with the commission tonight are those items that we can regulate um, and think about and, and and change if need be. You mentioned a lot of things that you can't regulate. Mm -hmm. What are the things you can regulate? Ah, yeah. So dimensional standards uh, uh, being probably the biggest one. Yeah. So when you're talking about the structure, the setbacks from the road, the heights, the, the amount of the, the the lot that something can cover, um, parking requirements for an individual lot. Um, there's the use of a building or a lot that can get regulated through zoning. There's aesthetic criteria, design criteria, for example, must have a door on the front, must have windows anything like that um that's it's sort of mostly what comes to mind right. yeah i'm sure there's something i'm forgetting but those are the big things that that we're really looking at for this exercise high requirements yeah high, yeah the dimensional stuff um that sound any other questions Anyone? all right Hope you go along. Yeah, no, I'll be bouncing around too, and uh, there's a whole bunch of sticky notes. Grab as many as you need. Pencils, pens. Oh, I had just one more question yeah. too on open spaces. Uh huh. So we can say we'd like more open spaces, or we don't feel yeah. that there's any open spaces left so at this point. So that, how do we? Because we can't reconstruct what's already there, so to speak. So that's a great question. So you're talking about public open spaces? Yeah. Yeah, so not necessarily as part of this exercise. Um, I'm happy to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about it. When we talk about, there, there are certain tools that we're not considering tonight, like an official map that communities can use to, to plan for open spaces. It's more, it's a long range plan where you might identify a space. Um, I don't, I don't think that we are looking at doing that exercise anytime soon, but it is a tool that is available to okay. planning commissioners. So you're looking at height and dimension. The dimensions are pretty much set in what's already there, so to speak. Um, so we might sort of. To change. That's yeah. What yeah. So the regulations, especially for the lakeside, do allow for rebuilding in a current footprint. And that's important, and I don't, I don't believe there's been any talk about changing that. It becomes a very sticky legal issue yeah. if you look at anything different than that. But that is, again, a footprint that does not um, hold over to or is a non-conforming law, at least on the lake side. The regulations speak to not increasing that non-conformity. Um, but again, there's also some height issues. There are still lots that are not built. Um, or could be subdivided. We, we still see, we get calls about these um, lots. So they're not all uh, necessarily going to turn over um, in the way that we've seen many, but I think the majority, you're right, are, are. And then you don't know how many open spaces there are on East, because we're just dealing with East Richard, right? You say, you know, there's, there's 89 and there are definite spaces um, comfortably for what we've been planning for. I mean, I'm just saying, because if you're saying open lot spaces, I don't even know think of it. Publicly owned, yeah, you mean? Yeah, so. Yeah. Definitely uh, food for thought. So once we get started, we'll do this, and then we can have them come to the mic. We'll have that same discussion again and for ideas and what, for what we're looking at. So we can start with that. Oh, absolutely, Corey. Kathy, can, um, I think it's a select board's realm, but in terms of traffic calming uh, 
speed bumps or something that would kind of slow yeah down so that's going to be the select board realm i mean there's there's an argument to be made that there are there are tools there are design tools that can help in in traffic calming ironically um, a lot of times there, there's a belief that as you bring um, properties closer to the road, that that can be a natural traffic calming. Porches, anytime you have the visibility of pedestrians and livability, can have a natural calming effect. Hmm. So there's some design criteria that might speak to that. But as far as actual speed bumps, speeds, that's going to go to the select board, not the planning commission. Okay. All right. So I'm going to bounce around if that's yeah, absolutely. okay. Absolutely. Take a look. Might as well. Might as well. This is what the current one is. No. This is current for R2. This is current for Lake Shore 2, which is uh, West Lake Shore. Just to give you an idea of. These are the West Lake Shore that the mic wants to go from something like this. Just as you're trying to get an understanding. If, for example, you think that the lake side of East Lake Shore should be similar to the lake side of West Lake Shore, this would tell you what the. I don't know much about what the, the polos are on West Lake Shore, right? Because I think yeah. they're back beyond. You know, if you're going down West Lake Shore, you're more in the in the uh, retail area until yeah. you kind of go in a little. It is very diverse. There are some small homes on small lots, just like you have on East Lake Shore. Not as many. There's some larger lots. There are some streets that come on. There's uh, I think an inn. Or a hotel of some sort of bed and breakfast, maybe, I think. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm very so interested in the building height. We have a very tall home just to get, put across the street from us on the lake shore. Probably pushing the 40 feet. And we're trying to well, we're we're trying trying figure it out. And that's 40 feet, too. Is that three story? Three story
on the right side or not? That went fantastic. I want to thank Kathy for that. This is all her idea. Great ideas. Great one-on-one -on -one conversations to understand where we are and where we want to go. Um, I'm going to let Kathy take over now. Let her do her thing. Yeah, Get so us our points. Um, I think what I want to do next, um, because I am appreciative of everyone's time and everyone coming out to share what they have with us, um, I want to just spend a very quick few minutes sort of bouncing around at the pictures and maybe just calling out a thing or two I see. Um, I do want to make sure that we have some time for anyone who wants to share a thought out loud for everyone to hear, for the commission to hear, or even for the commission to respond to, that you have an opportunity to do that. So we will do that as well. Um, and lastly, I want to be able to touch on the process um, so you know what the next steps will be and what we're doing and maybe not doing. And um, something I didn't say earlier, but that I think is important to articulate is that the, the plan for doing this and because it has been so long sort of as a goal to, to look at this area, the commission discussed at their last two meetings that this might be sort of a phased approach, that, that there's the potential for a lot of changes to the regulations in this area, um, and maybe even some very good ones. We wanna make sure though, that we don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, and that there's, we have a goal of getting to the biggest, most important things for folks early, and so those important things may move along quicker ahead of maybe some smaller items that are still as, as important to people, but maybe either need more articulation, more conversation, um, more refinement. Um, those may be in a phase two. So I do wanna sort of preview that for folks because I think that's important. And, and if we do have a draft set of regulations that we start to look at in the spring and summer here, and you see something that you brought up or that was important that had, didn't make that first cut, it doesn't mean that it won't. It's just that there are some things, if there are big things that the commission and the select board wanna see soon, we don't wanna have the other things slow that down. Doesn't do any good to write zoning changes if every property is completely redeveloped before you get a chance to adopt them. So it's important that, that some things may may move faster, so I appreciate patience with that. Um, I'm gonna read, if that's okay. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I don't know even where I should start, but I'm very interested in seeing some of these. Um, so these are, yeah, these are a little, um, a little fun for me because they're not, they're a little non-residential. Um, let's see, what do we have? No more commercial, commercial lots of, these are really helpful, I think, um, to hear these kinds of thoughts. Cheesy looking. Um, <laughs> so I don't, I don't think there are a lot of fans of this one. And, but, but hearing that is just as helpful as hearing things you like. Um, so I will take all of these and compile them into a document 
um, for sharing that will be available on our website so everyone can see everything that's on here. Um, no commercial, okay. Uh, West Lakeshore, maybe. Cute. Needs a facade, okay. Commercial could work at Bayside, okay. So mixed, mixed reviews of this type of um, live work. Another fancy planning work. Um, no more commercial. Okay, not a fan. Yuck. Uh, love the idea of a shop like this. Um, all right, I'm getting a theme. No commercial. <laughs> That's okay. Um, what do you got here? And a question. Who thinks this is residential? Who thinks it's a commercial? It's very That's what I love yeah. about it. I have no idea what it is. It's very transitional because it could be an apartment tomorrow and as, as the market changes. It's a small cheese shop or an artist studio um, two years from now. Maybe not appropriate for Lakeshore, we'll see. Nice, but too much for East Lakeshore, see. Seems ugly, don't need more ugly, okay, did it? Just wanted to do that, Like it. Uh, utility should be covered. Oh, that's kind of cool, too. Um, overbuilt for the area. Great entry. I okay. agree. Uh, oh, oh, there's this the door. door. Oh, the door, thank you. So this one is a space project. It's all around the same building with two different views. Um, one's coming from the north and one's coming from the south. Um, this is like Bob and Yeah, you get extra cookie. Little next to this isn't bad. There's parking and parking. Uh, quaint, touristy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, commercial on desire. Okay, so good. Good, good. As long as we can park safely, this could be cool. Um, I think the reason that I wanted to share this one with you is because I think it's so approximate to what East Lake Shore is in, in terms of how close it is. And Especially uh, Norris's Corner. It looks just like Norris's Corner. Is that the one that's down by like, <laughs> uh, I think it's like on the Bay Road or East Lake. Just as you, yeah, yeah okay. Term. Yeah, that's what it brought to mind there. There's, is it a marina or a repair shop that's There used to be a, a yeah, so it was a Did you like it? Did you like it when it was there? Oh, yeah. It was popular. Yeah. 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 They had a public beach yeah. in front of it, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Or a private public beach is what they had in front of it. It's a simple block, I think, in terms of size and depth. Did they have parking? They did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
and some of them were from like Sudden in New Hampshire, um, how, how common garages were, and we don't see that on East Lake Shore. Oh, I thought it was really good. Yeah. But it is less common, especially in the late South. So it stood out to me the garage which is not uh, out of character, it's not fit, okay, not popular. Sometimes it's hard because you're going like, oh, 
And he said, it's my grandmother. She had just like that. So you're thinking of the past yeah, not sure. going to so I don't know. I mean, we're getting, I think we get caught. Yeah. I think it's because it's set in nature. Oh, so the trees are what's sort of appealing to you. Okay, the landscape. Right? This one has landscape, mm -hmm. and that one. Yeah. That, that one has landscape, and you would be able to see a lot of Maybe there's a sewer access in the front? They've got some to mm -hmm. Not a tree. You don't really want them all to look at it. So they don't. Right. You want some no. character involved. Right. Character. Yeah. And that has character, I guess, yeah. in the looks. It's, it's it could be a little, it could be a story and a half or two stories, it wouldn't matter. It could be a whole story underground, it wouldn't matter to me. It just has a, you know, a campy look to it. We didn't talk about color either, like someone wanted an orange house versus a, we didn't talk about color either. You didn't talk about anything you want? Oh, I know. <laughs> you haven't have mentioned that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, if you have thoughts on that, share them here. There's a blank paper back there for random thoughts that don't get really associated with anything. Um, yeah, I, the more comments, the, the better, I think. Yeah. So this one's, this one's fun. Okay. So this is one story at the street. Yeah. Just to point out, this is, this is one story at the street. And uh, four. Four down here. Um, too big. Too big. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic? Somebody liked it. Uh, no, too big, just not fit. Large, too grand. Uh, big, too um, if you, so again, it's, it's what your pre existing footprint was. Um, it's 150 feet, so no new structures within 150 feet of the lake, which uh, goes really across the road. 150 feet will get you through those lots and halfway into the road, maybe you will cross. And you're not going to cut anything between the other Yeah, then there's the tree. The 150 feet from the water you can't cut. But if you had already built this, or a structure here, in like or something, you can still build out to here. Mm -hmm. They're not performing regulations. So uh, you would be able to build it fresh if you had nothing here. Uh, okay. I don't believe it. can't be washed at all. They just go to the new again. <laughs> Alright, so in all fairness, this is not a beachfront property, but it was narrow and I was trying to really, that's, that was my goal here. So tall, okay, yeah, so too high, too narrow, too high, so what do we got? Probably, that's probably about 35 feet to the tip of the ridge, if I guess. Uh, too tall on lakeside. Just so you know, it's 40 feet right now. Uh, love it. Looks okay. Looks like a rental. Nice house. So I, I am curious if anyone wants to share with me. So the people who liked it, are there certain elements that you liked about it? Any in particular? Anyone who did like it? I'm curious. Is the porch? Is it the windows? Color in the porch. The color in the porch. The color in the porch. What's the overall look? And, and it doesn't have a shot behind all the porch. Yeah. Yeah, no, just a flat shot. At least a porch makes it not look like a tower. Right. Right. Yeah, where's the ugly one? If you put a white porch on the ugly one, it's blue. Yeah. It's a little bit of light. Sure. So, porch color. Bigger windows? Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, you don't want big windows. If this is towards the lake side, but you don't want big windows on the roadside, would you? Unless the I mean, I don't know. True. I mean, you want it if you're facing the lake, but it depends on what the position of that is. If that right. looking. I gotta ask you a question. If I do that, do you still like it? If it's flat. No. Well, it's gonna be flat anyway because you don't. The snow, you can't have flat. Yeah, you need a uh, That's true. So we see a lot of shed roofs. So they're. Kind of flat with just enough of a pitch for the snow, but they're not, they, they sort of pitch back at a very slow. That's what we're seeing a lot of new birds come in. Um, yeah, and I don't know if it's just because you can fit more when you're talking about 40 feet. You know, this is not a lot of living space, but you still have to count all of that. I don't know necessarily what's driving the flat roof um, redesigns, okay. but almost, almost all of them, if you drive down and look at the new ones, they're largely flat roofed or close to flat roofed, I 
Shack or anywhere. Um, it doesn't have that same pitch. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But some, some comments I've heard before tonight have been about roofs. So that's why I'm sort of pushing just to hear some feedback on that. Because well, if that house was positioned at least you'll see how the great roof is.
So Lakeshore 1, again, is West Lakeshore Lake Side. So if you're going up West Lakeshore, this is the existing standards for that portion. I think it's in sort of a, I don't even know what color it is over there. But that's the West Lakeshore Lake Side. It's a little bit of East Lakeshore um, as well. Um, I've not heard of any real concerns since this was adopted in 2016. We've seen a couple of um, rebuilds on the lake. There's not as many, it's, just, it's, it's less properties, I think, but there's been a few. Haven't heard major concerns, seems to be working out okay for folks. The so breakfast was that uh, area B was the newer, newest one down there. Yeah, how old is that? I don't, I'm not familiar with it. Is that recent? Seven years maybe. Is it about that? Uh, seven years. I wonder if that predated this or not. And it was already a building yeah. there. Right. Well, there was yeah. a building there. Yeah. There was a building there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's such a rebuild. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys like it? I think it fits. I, like it. I didn't want to take I didn't want to. Just like short drive, I think it fits. Yeah. They've got frontage and yeah. Yeah. The space. I like the colors. Yeah. Yeah. There are no, yeah. it's yeah. different, different. Textures on the outside, right? Some yeah. flat, flat uh, steel, and yeah, like, yeah. some wood and things. This is all done. Yeah. Whoever did it, I could have. So I don't know if that was built under this zoning or not. I was, yeah. And I don't know the zoning that was there before that. Was that did it have its own? What's that? What was the West Lake Shore on the, before you guys rezoned it? Uh, it was hodgepodge, mix of commercial, oh. R2. Bunch of different stuff? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so you'll see that the big difference is really between the non-lake side and the lake side is, you know, sort of the recognition, you'll see it in the uses, so not just the standards here, but in the uses, and we're not necessarily here to talk about those tonight, but there is a recognition of the need for sort of some commercial um, spaces on the non-lake shore side there. Today, this is the R2. This is what affects most of that East Lake Shore area. So, um, again, road frontage. A bunch of people ask me about this, but I'll say it aloud for the group. This is just if you're creating a new lot, you'd have to meet this. It doesn't mean that if you already have a lot, that you can't rebuild if you don't have it. Um, and that's an important takeaway. The front yard setback. I do know. So, one of the things that we'll be talking about. Um, before I, I came to the town, there was a review in la late spring of last year about what a change in the setback would look like. So we do have that sort of drafted. I don't have it to share here tonight, but um, we do have some information for what a 30-foot setback actually looks like on East Lake Shore. And I think, where did this funny? from? So it starts from the road right away. Um, I don't know, unfortunately, off the top of my head, what the road right away is for East Lake Shore. Um, it moves around a bit on East Lake Shore because the road has been moved. So centered. it gets a little complicated. That would definitely be a Brian Osborne question. Because when we start, when yeah. we did the study about, because people talk about sidewalks and such, uh, the right of way is not exactly where the road is. Yeah, ideally you have a road that's centered in your right-of-way, so it's very easy. You go to the middle, you measure out, you can find where your property line is. You folks on East Lake Shore, not so easy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. It's probably, it's not that deep, given what we've seen of rebuilds. I, mean, I know that they're not in the right-of-way. Um, but it's probably not the edge of the road either. Um, so comments on this um, are really helpful. I'm not going to read them all out loud now. I do encourage you either today before you go or when you get home. I have a stack of cards. I'll bring them over here. If you have thoughts about these as you spend more time with it, this is the bulk of what we're going to be talking about. All of this will inform that. So we're, we may not be talking just about height. We may be talking about some use. Or maybe saying height is okay if. Maybe stories are more important than actual feet. Um, so those are things we're sort of going to be taking into that. but. As you look at this, as you think about it, feel free to continue to send some comments, um, whether they are on specific pieces or or just general thoughts. <coughs> it's a good place to share it. So <coughs> I think that's everything. Um,
before I sit back down, though, I wonder if anyone had any additional thoughts they want to share or questions, um, <coughs> either about process or current zoning. Any? I guess a good question is the current zoning. Like right now, it's all residential. There's no commercial on it at this point. And I know in, in the past we talked about you know, the commercial. But um, and as things go, change going forward, I guess that would be a consideration. But there's just so many other things that uh, the need is. I mean, the new system's coming through. Um, it's sort of hard to try to figure out going forward when it's all really tore up for two years or three years. Because that does like a good base. And that does, I guess what you're planning today is going to try to figure out to help us going forward as that is completed. So I had a question too with that about our building um, future. You know, if we don't have a police department, I don't know how we can have all this. So that's a good point. I know, but it's just. But I do want to, about use. So, something that I also want to share with you is that as you're thinking about this, it's not necessarily a dichotomous question. You could feel, not that you have to, you could be absolutely against anything not residential, but feel free to use if and but statements when you talk about these things. You might say, I really don't want commercial, but I'd be okay with a 500 square foot artist studio. You know, so you can think about it in context. You can talk about size. You can talk about certain types of uses. It doesn't have to be the broad brush of a Starbucks versus um, an apartment building versus a single family house. So anytime you're sharing those thoughts, feel free to put any disclaimers on any thoughts you have. Those are helpful because we don't think just in those terms of yes and no, commercial, not commercial. Um, we have a million use categories. We can create new ones. There are some, for example, on West Lakeshore that say retail is okay if it's less than 5,000 square feet. So you can have a small shop, you can have a big shop. That number is something that is malleable for different zones. And, it, and it's important that we think about those contexts when we're thinking about things. But it's also perfectly okay to share that. Yeah. There is yeah. dichotomy. It's, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's hard for us to think that way because we're thinking, well, if, um, we wouldn't mind some of that there on East Lake Shore Drive if, if there was sidewalks and if the road was wider and if there was a lot more spaces to pull over and there was more parking. And so we're trying to think of things like that. We go, but that's impossible. But that's good. I think it's okay to say, I'm okay with a coffee shop if it has off street parking behind a building and it's less than a thousand square feet. Things I'm making up. But it's okay to have those statements. I think that everything is informative and it shares where your values are. It may not be where the planning commission agrees with you or not, but but it gives them insight as to what you're thinking, and that's really helpful. So those are those are good. Anything else? Okay, I'm gonna go sit down. <laughs> Make rich talk. <laughs> Perfect. I think you got, as far as general conversation, we're all great. I hope yeah. everybody enjoyed this. It was very informative for us, I'll tell you right now. Uh, if anybody does want to have to say something individual, welcome to come up to the mic, state your name for us. Straightforward deal, but hopefully I think Kathy covered every corner of everything. I don't think you missed much. <laughs> I have a few I'll be, um, I don't know if we'll talk about them tonight, but there's a few questions that it, there's still more themes to cover. Um, so for example, when LS1 and LS2 were written, uh, we included low impact development standards. So if you do do anything on, on West Lakeshore right now, you have to have certain LID standards. So you have to treat your stormwater on site, for example, which is not typically a requirement of a residential property. Usually you're only talking about stormwater management for commercial or, or site plan type properties. So we'll be talking about whether or not copying that so that'll be a question I have for you. Um, and I'll bring a recommendation, of course, but we'll be talking about that. Um, 
storm water. Um, well, that's pretty important because we will do whatever it takes to keep the bay clean. It's all small pieces of the puzzle, so yeah. that's just another piece. Yep. So that's something that's still up there for discussion, but sure. we don't have to do it tonight. Yeah, sir. I just want to say thank you for sending these out because I think I would have missed this meeting without these. So appreciate it. <laughs> and we are having, um, just before we move on, um, on Friday morning for anyone who wants to come again and talk or for anyone who wasn't able to make it, if your neighbors weren't able to make it, um, if evenings are hard, people at home with children or working second shifts, um, Friday morning. We will not have the planning commission there, but my staff will be there. Just want to just talk to people, answer questions. We'll have all the pictures again, so people can share more thoughts. Um, feel free to drop in again, or let your neighbors know if they weren't able to come, or anyone even across town. Um, I, I think there's value in hearing from people, not just not just who live on the road, but also pass it every day. Everybody's a stakeholder. Fantastic. If anybody has anything else. We are going to move on after this. I can't thank you enough for coming tonight. Again, I've said it multiple times, I know, but it's very important. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good job. Very good job. It's going to take me a little while to get everything yeah. organized, but no, no. I'll get there. Great input. All right, so let's move on. So where are we here? Staff updates. When do you think the next meeting will be? The month or? 19th. 19th? Okay. Yeah, oh, so um, great question. Um, so we will have a meeting on the 19th, but I don't think we're talking about East Lakeshore on the 19th. On the 19th, um, we have a variety of outstanding zoning requests that people have submitted to us over the last X. So that's the real purpose of the 19th. I don't think I'm going to be prepared with anything on East Lakeshore. Uh, but the next meeting after that for East Lakeshore, we're looking at May 3rd. It's another Tuesday, 7 o'clock at night, May 3rd. And we'll, we probably can't do the postcards again, but um, we will make sure that that's advertised. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. And also, just if people leave their email, email. Yes. If you have yes. Email. If you leave your email here and you put a star or something next to it, um, We'll keep you on a mailing list. And if you haven't signed up for the town newsletter, we also advertise in that, and it's it's great. Um, if you haven't signed up for that, if you go right to our website, I think it's right on the main page. It pops, yeah. pops up. Yeah. Sign up for our town newsletter. Yeah. So I encourage you to do it. Nice to see you. All right. Staff updates. All right. Staff updates. These are pretty quick. So. Uh, all hazard mitigation plan, um, just as a reminder, and for anyone who's not familiar with it, uh, we are required to do this. Uh, most municipalities will do it as a county. We've chosen to do ours um, ourselves. It has um, been received by the state and has uh, had a preliminary approval. It just needs to be adopted by the select board. Once it's actually adopted, it'll get a final approval. So everything looks good there. We had no changes to, that we had to make. Um, monthly development reports, so every month we put together a listing of um, permits that we do in the office, what's going on with the DRB. I sent you the February one, unfortunately the March one, I didn't quite get done yet. Yeah. Um, we're only two days into April, but that'll come around in email and we put that on our website too if anyone yeah. wants to see it. Um, Notice of proposed updates to an abutting municipality. So by statute, anytime you do anything, you have to notify any neighboring property. I looked through these ones in Winooski. There's nothing, um, there's nothing I saw in there that would have an impact on, on the town of Colchester. Can I ask? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering about the traffic impact maybe on Mallets Bay Ave and Route 7 by that development in Winooski, that amount of development, especially Mallets Bay Ave if people were cutting, you know, maybe cutting, you know, using it as a shortcut or trying Is to get to Is that specific to their new regulations or just like a general question about? Just a general question. Um, you know, I haven't heard anything, but I could follow up with our public works director and see um, see if there's been any issues. I mean, I drive it fairly frequently. I haven't, I haven't noticed anything, but 
I'm just wondering with the new development, it sounds like they're doing a lot of housing. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure that it's necessarily in, in that section, but um, I think really they're focusing right now on the um, seven. seven, yeah. Yeah, coming in from yeah. the interstate there. Yep. That I think that's their area of, of development right now. Um, okay. And sometimes I read these neighboring codes to see if there's anything cool in there that we might want to see. Um, <laughs> not that Winooski's not doing a good job, but there was happy. nothing in there I wanted to steal. <laughs> okay. I said, you know, why reinvent the wheel? Um, but I didn't see anything in there that I thought would be particularly useful in this round. Uh, and then ongoing work of the Planning and Zoning Department. Um, we continue to push permits. Um, you public may not be aware, we had a, a, a very large staff turnover um, this summer. And we went from a staff of six to a staff of one. Most of this summer we had one person who was issuing all of the permits, the deputy town manager um, and Kathy O'Reilly, who may have just left, um, came down to help. Um, and so we've been staffing the department back up. We now have a staff of four. We're still a little bit more behind on some permitting than I would like, but we are, we're getting, I think, a lot better. The staff is great. Um, the whole team is fantastic. Uh, the DRB is now meeting more regularly again. Um, so we're, we're working our way there. Um, but it's a great crew. If you haven't met them or if you're ever in the town offices, stop and see them. Um, things are going well. Very talented crew. Perfect. Good team. Nate, I think that's it for staff updates. Do you want me to go right into the next meeting dates? Yep. Update. Okay. I did put... Um, put these together for you they weren't in the packet I'm sorry oh. um, with just some updates and ideas of where we'll where we'll go so April 19th um, we had promised an April meeting for folks with outstanding zoning requests so we'll do a consideration on that day uh, I may have some staff requests for you as well too I'm not quite sure um, there may be a DRB request or two that's been hanging out there the goal for that meeting will be to follow the new procedure of, do we even want to talk about this? Um, there will be some that are just completely out of line with the town plan, and that'll be a consideration. Uh, that might make them a very quick discussion. Um, so that is the 19th. The only other thing on the 19th will be a presentation of the capital um, equipment improvement plan. I know I'm going to butcher it. Um, so Renee Marshall, our deputy town manager, will be here to present that plan to you. Um, I don't think that this is going to be a particularly late evening, so I thank you for adding an extra April meeting. Um, yep. But we're going to keep that to those two items. Uh, May 3rd, I think we'll resume a review of East Lakeshore. I'm going to highlight, I think, those points, and I'm going to put something together for you to respond to. It's going to be a a best guess based on what I've heard from you, what I've heard from the community, and uh, and it's spaghetti at the wall for you to organize and um, talk about. So hopefully we'll have something. Um, if that continues to work out, we may look at a June discussion and possibly a warning for July or August. Um, that's, it, it really depends how the May meeting goes, but. Yeah. The goal is a, a May discussion of East Lakeshore again. Um, yeah. and, and also some other outstanding, um, it's going to be Supplement 44. Right. Um, is there any way we can get some visual, like maybe, this is just my thinking, like just some visual, like uh, what it would look like, what different, what possibilities are from the input that we're getting. So I, you know, be just I just find it so helpful to see some kind of visual representation. Yeah. Well, I'll see what we can do. I tried talking my 16-year-old into learning SketchUp. I know <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Because it's yeah. like $25 for a student membership, and mm -hmm. it's like $400 for me. He didn't buy it, <laughs> but we'll see. Okay, we'll see if we can Great. get. Thank you. The software to do it is out there. Yeah, but um, yeah, I know your time, so yeah. you know. But I just thought it'd be helpful. Yeah, helpful. Yeah, I understand. We'll see. Um, and that's all I have. I think 
think there's some dates that we're holding. Again, those are very malleable at this point. I know summer is a popular vacation time, so we can adjust these as needed as you guys are away. Um, we have an applicant to make member five for the planning commission. Um, I, I don't think I saw him here this evening. Um, still in the applicant stage, not not appointed or not not even considered at this point publicly, but. There is an applicant, so you may be a body of five by your next meeting. I'm not sure. Are we getting a student, another student? We That's we're working on that yeah. in the future, right? That's not right now. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. I haven't had any conversations about yeah. that, but that's something if you guys want to get feedback on. Yeah, I think that was a COVID holdover. Yeah. Till we get our act together, get our board back up at speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah having that extra body. Yeah. I think we're trying yeah. to stay away from the risks for yeah. for the student population, but. Yep, absolutely. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Can I just ask one? Oh, yeah. Just um, the Rick Davy, who I thought gave a really nice, had a nice you know, suggestions. One of the suggestions was to do a character study. And I was just wondering what your thoughts were on that um, in terms of East Lakeshore Drive. I mean, it just, you know, just understanding how to retain the character of the, of the drive. Yeah. Um, I'll have to give it some more thought um, as to how involved something is. Um, it's a tool, but it's not, it, it's a good tool, I guess I will say. Whether or not it is something that we can achieve in the timeline and budget that we've set out for this is, is the, the real question. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a great suggestion and it's a good tool, but I just, I don't know if if we have the the time you know what we've talked about to date is we could spend two years talking about this and we might end up with the perfect product or we could have six months and get 90 percent of of what you like um and it would actually be in effect for a longer period of time as opposed to if we wait for two years and every they're 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 there's a lot of rebuilding going on. Um, I think I can count four in the last six months that I've seen come into the office. Um, so two years, I think you're not gonna have much to apply it to if we wait too long. So I guess that's that would be my response there. They're great suggestions, but they are time consuming. Yep. I just didn't know if they were a good investment in terms of ending up with what you know, I mean, ultimately, it's your call. Mm -hmm. um, I will do whatever you instruct. I would just, you know, caution you to again keep an eye out for, you know, the perfect and the good, and, and what your time frame is. Thank you. Anything else? I have nothing else. I need a motion for the minutes of February first. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. All good. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> I need a second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Who made those last motions?